Hello and welcome to this quest guide for Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree, where I'm going over every quest in the DLC in order so you can follow along and make sure that you don't miss any of the steps. The video includes the main DLC story and all NPC side quests and there are a total of 14 NPCs in the game. I'll also talk about all optional rewards for the NPCs and also there are some choices you can make for different outcomes and rewards or there's choices that you can make that straight up break the quests entirely so some quests can become missable. But if you follow this guide then you won't have any problems although I should point out if you do things in a different order than I show. For example if you reach certain locations too early then you can break some quests so I recommend you watch the video a little bit or at least do everything in this first video before you do any exploration, just to make sure you don't get too far ahead too early. So we start at the very beginning of the DLC. Step one is to speak with Knight Leda when you are entering the DLC in Mogwine Palace. Step two, we're going to meet and speak with Redmain Freya and Hornsent at the Three Path Cross Site of Grace in the Gravesite Plains. Make sure with this NPC and all NPCs to exhaust all of their dialogue. And you can also rest at the Grace Point to make sure that they don't have extra dialogue once you've done that. And it's a good idea to do that for every single NPC interaction. Step 3, speak to Sir Ansbach and Moor at the main gate cross site of Grace outside the Bellarut Tower settlement. We must be the tarnished. I am Ansbach, formerly in service to Lord Moog. I, like, finding things for you, maybe things. I, like, for you, things. Bring Step 4, rest and speak with Ansbach about Moor. Then you can speak to Moor again, again, exhausting all of their dialogue. Step 5 is to find and talk to Theolie at the Pillar Path Cross Site of Grace on the northeastern border of the Gravesite Plains. Step 6, return and speak to Moor to get the Black Syrup. Return to Theolie and speak with him and you will get Theolie's concoction. This is needed for a quest later in the story. Step 7 is to meet Igon at the Pillar Pathway point. He's screaming about Bale. You don't really have to do anything else for him just right now. Step 8, start the Bellarut Tower settlement and make your way to the second point of grace called the Small Private Altar. Step 9, from here we will find the storeroom key and use it to reach the next NPC called Horn Scent Grand Dam. And once you find her, you can simply exhaust all of her dialogue options. Step 10, from here, in the same location, we can head up and around to start the Fire Knight Queeling quest where he will invade you and you need to defeat him. Now before we go on to the next step I want to mention at this location here with the birds on the main path you can reach Mikola's cross inside of the tower settlement 
you don't need to find these crosses they're simply for lore and story reasons but i just wanted to mention it here in case you want to find them and find about all the lore when you speak to Anne's back layer in the story Step 11, the next step is to simply finish the Belarut Tower and defeat the Dance and Lying boss. Be sure to summon Freya at the door in the boss's chamber. After the boss is defeated, make sure to pick up the Dance and Lying's head. Step 12, from here, return to the Horn Scent Grand Dam and equip the Divine Beast head. After talking with her, you get the Watchful Spirit Incantation, rest at the Sight of Grace and can talk to her again and she will give you Scorpion Stew. Her quest is essentially finished, but you can return to her later after you've defeated Mesmer and she will give you more Scorpion Stew. Step 14, return and speak with Ansbach about the cross. Like I said, the crosses are for lore purposes only, you don't actually have to find them all, but if you choose not to, then it won't affect his questline. Step 15. Return and speak with Freya and Hornscent. Give, you can give Hornscent the Scorpion Stew if you want to. He will give you a reward. Just make sure that you exhaust both of their dialogue options. Step 16 is to start and finish Castle Ensis to reach the Skadu Altis. Make sure to summon Needle Knight Leda at the boss door to Castle Ensis. There's nothing inside that is tied to quest. All you have to do is finish and complete it and reach the next area. Step 17. At the beginning of the High Road Cross Site of Grace, speak to Leda and Hornsent to exhaust all dialogue. Be sure to pick up the Monk's Missive and may the best win gesture next to Hornsent. Again, Hornscent gives you a map to find more of Mikola's crosses, but these are not required in order to complete the quest, they're simply for helping you to follow the main story, and for lore purposes. Step 18, head from the High Road Cross Point of Grace to the Church of Crusade. Here you will be invaded a second time by Fire Knight Queeling, and you can defeat him to get the Prayer Room Key. Step 19, head to the Murth Ruins and speak with Dryleaf Dane. May, use the May the Best Win gesture and you'll be transported to a realm to fight him, simply defeat him and then pick up your rewards. Step 20 is not a quest related one, but it is missable, so make sure to collect and deliver all Forager Brood cookbooks to Moor before heading to Shadow's Keep. Step 21, travel to the Shadow Keep in the Skadu Altis. As you reach the entrance, a message will appear saying somewhere a rune has broken. This will trigger a change in all of the game's NPCs. Step 22, return and speak with Ansbach until he disappears. You can do the same with Freya, and then you can go and speak with Hornscent, who mentions he needs to get revenge on Mesmer. Next, speak with Leida, and she will ask you to choose Theolier or Hornscent in order to target. It doesn't really matter which one you choose because the outcomes are pretty much the same, but just to be careful, I chose Horn Scent. Step 23, go and speak to Moor and he asks, must we be sad forever? And he gives you two choices, put it behind you or remain sad forever. If you pick put it behind you, you will fight Moor later in the story and it's just an elongated way of doing this mission. So it's up to you if you'd much rather fight him later on. However, if you choose to do remain sad forever, you can get his quest rewards much earlier, which is the game's best armor. So that is a choice I made. After you speak to Moor, you can then head to Shadow Keep. Step 24, assist Leda or Hornscent when you find their summoning signs. 
During Shadow's Keep, you can find two summoning signs just before the elevator to the storehouse first floor, one to assist Leda and defeat Hornscent, or one to assist Hornscent and defeat Leda. Now, there are different options and outcomes for this mission. If you help Leda defeat Hornscent, you will miss out on the chance to summon Hornscent during the Mesmer fight. If you help Hornscent, Leda will move on to endgame as normal, and you get the Ash of War Swift Slash. The third option is you can simply ignore the fight, and I think that is probably the best outcome. However, if you do this, then you will miss out on the next optional summoning part of Leda's questline. It won't ultimately affect the quest, it can't be breakable this one, but you can miss out on some optional rewards if you do. The third option then is to simply ignore the fight, and that is the one that I chose. I don't want to lose Hornsand in the summoning when I fight Mesmer, but I also don't want to help Leda. Now after you defeat Mesmer, you will get another choice where, after you speak to Leda, where she will ask you to help her defeat Ansbach. If you decide to side with Ansbach and you defeat Leda, then nothing really happens, you will see Leda later on. However, if you decide to side with Leda, you can defeat Ansbach and you will get his bow. You'll also get the Retaliatory Crossed Tree Talisman, which are two items that you can't get any other way. But of course, you will lose Ansbach as a summon in the final boss, which is something that I'd recommend you probably need, because the final boss is probably the most difficult boss in the entire Elden Ring. However, who you decide to summon and fight is really up to you. You can simply ignore both if you prefer, but there's just some alternate rewards that you can get if you help Leda defeat Ansbach. There's no point in summoning Leda to help you defeat Hornscent because the only reward is his armor. You get that later in the game anyway. So the real, the best outcomes are simply ignore the first summoning signs and then for the second to either assist Leda and get the rewards or assist Ansbach and get him as a summon. That is pretty much the outcomes of these parts of the quest. But as I mentioned, both are simply skippable if you'd prefer and ignoring them won't break any of your quests. Let's move on to step 25. We're going to move to Freya and Sir Anne's back set of quests inside of Shadow's Keep. A big warning here, do not pick up the secret right scroll in the dungeon until you speak with Freya for the first time as it can easily break this entire quest line. So let's start at the storehouse first floor. Step 26, from the point of grace, head forward to find Anne's back and speak with him. Travel through the Shadow Keep to reach Freya on the seventh floor site of Grace. Return to Ansbach to give him Freya's message. And then head to the fourth floor site of Grace and collect the secret rite scroll right now. You can then give this to Ansbach. You pretty much had to speak with Freya and give him the message to Ansbach before giving him the scroll. Speak to Freya or it's possible you just need to reload the area and return to Ansbach and he gives you the letter for Freya. Give the letter to Freya and return to Ansbach to pass on the message from Freya. After this, both NPCs will disappear and you pretty much see them again in endgame. Step 27, make your way to the end of Shadow's Keep and defeat Mesmer. Ensure to summon Hornscent while inside the boss arena. After Mesmer is defeated, you can speak with Hornscent. Pain 
Step 28, we are going to return to Needle Knight Leda and speak with her. She has decided to target Sir Ansbach, as I mentioned before. You can return to the storehouse first floor to find the two summoning signs and you can choose either one. It's up to you. I already mentioned the outcomes. Step 29, last but not least, for this part of the guide, return to the Church of Crusade to find Moore's body, pick up his armor, and this concludes the Moor quest line. Well guys, that is it for the end of part one of this guide. In part two, we will go over some of the remaining side quests before we go into the end game in part three. I really appreciate it if you like and comment. It really helps YouTube to recommend the video to other people. Also subscribe to see more helpful guides and I will see you in the next video. Bye.